What's going on? Hello and welcome to the Darren Green Show, your one-stop shop for celebrity gossip, news and music, pop culture, and the latest gab on social media. Be sure that if you are watching this on YouTube to leave your thoughts in the comments. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, girl, what is going on? Subscribe to that ZM channel. Okay, and also to the audio listeners, hey, how y'all doing? Be sure to give the podcast a rate and review. We love those. We got to keep this podcast in rotations and recommendations and all of the good things, all of the good things. Now, what is going on? Happy Monday, y'all. What's going on over there at We Are You Radio? Hey, how y'all doing, child? You love. It's been a minute. I feel like it has been a minute, child. I did not give you guys a Thursday show. Like I said, we, we, we twice a week, right? But it's tentative. Okay, it's very tentative on the Thursdays. <laughs> but I promise to give you a show every Monday. Um, Yeah, I had to really take a step back from... A lot of things. Yeah, I've completely lost the plot. I've completely lost the plot. And for me, I had to just take a little bit of a step back from social media and really reflect on some things. I'm always, look, I'm a Libra child. I'm always feeling energies and things. And I'm just like, okay, my mental space needs to be where it needs to be before I get up on this microphone. Shout and give you guys a legendary mother show, okay? I feel like sometimes I do too much, right? I do too much. And that's one of the things that people really do tell me is like when you focus on so many different things, like you can't, it, like the content that you do care about, it lacks. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I feel like I was just like going through the motions and just like keeping up with the Joneses over there on TikTok and Instagram and try to be omnipresent on different, all different platforms at the same time when really, girl, I'm... <laughs> You need to fix. You need to worry about this. This is what you need to worry about. Okay, I'm a podcaster first. Like I've always said that I'm a podcaster first. I'm not no TikToker. I'm not. I don't even consider myself a YouTuber. I'm on here. I live, that's where the podcast lives. Half of the podcast. That's where y'all live. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like I've just been focusing on the wrong things and doing other things. That okay, it's been giving me a little bit of a buzz. So let me just keep on with that and not really focus on what what I here to do. Okay, which is spread the good news. Okay, but not only about the good news, but the the messy news. Okay, so I've been sitting back and observing a lot of things, and reworking things, and then working on my craft and reading. Child, I'm over here reading books. I got an audio book that I'm reading right now. Okay, I think I, I believe it's called Spontaneous Speaking. And I've always, you know, I like to be vulnerable with y'all because y'all, I, I can't. If I can't be honest with y'all, then who am I be honest to? You know, I feel like. I do feel like I'm a good communicator, but I also feel like there's always room to of improvement. And also, I look back at my shows. I'm, I'm very, I me, mean, I'm a perfectionist queen, honey. I, I I look back at some things, and y'all might like it. And I'm just looking back, and I'm just like, mm, I said that wrong, or that didn't come out right. Or one of the main things that I've been noticing is just I'll make a take on something, and then I look back, and I'm like, you know what, you know what, I don't think that I think I should have reworded that topic. I think I should have really thought about that a little bit more, because now I'm feeling. The opposite. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I don't know. I've just been, you know, hanging tight and in and, and reevaluating a lot of things. And that just comes with the game of content creation. You're always going to sit there and look at your content and pick apart things and all that good stuff, chow. But it really didn't dawn on me until I saw this video of this person. We always watch those videos that are like monumental and, and entrepreneurial and, and oh, how to how to start a business or how to do that. But there was this one video that I did saw that was really interesting. It basically said this whole notion that you need to have multiple streams of income is a detriment because at the end of the day, when you look in history, when you look at people that became successful, they became successful doing one thing, doing that one thing really well until they're able to expand their brand so that they can branch out into other endeavors. And that's how you essentially have that multiple stream. So I think that from going forward, we going to be doing more on the podcast inside, okay? We're going to be doing... The podcast is going to be the main focus because I feel like I've lost sight. And I feel like I've said this many episodes ago, but it just is what it is. I, I Sometimes I have to re-remind myself, like, hey, okay, stay on topic, stay on task. You're losing the plot here. So, yes, honey, you're going to get more of the Darren Green Show. It is what it is, child. We got a lot to get into. Let's not talk too much. We already five minutes in this dang episode, okay? So, we have a lot to get into. I want to talk about Tyler, the creator, because he started a really interesting conversation 
And then I want to talk about Michael Rubin. Okay, he's got dragged by the black community for defending Meek Mill and people calling him queer and all that stuff. And we'll get into that a little bit later. We also got to talk about Nicki Minaj. She is settling against the YouTuber Nosy Ho. All that and more coming up on the Darren Green Show. Now, Tyler, the creator. Okay, he started an interesting conversation this week. He recently got on a show to talk about his disdain for newer generation artists, the artists that are coming out now. I'm going to read this article from Billboard, and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts, but I'm also going to share like a clip of what he said. So basically what that Billboard article said was the rapper sat down with uh, media personality businessman Maverick Carter um, from one of his episodes, The Mavericks, on the Spring Hill platform. Uh, it was a good interview, I would say. I love, I love when they, you know, they get the artists down, they sitting down, the little venue is nice and classy, and they just sitting down and just having a casual conversation. It was a 20, I think it was like a 26-minute interview, which was like, thank you, child, because y'all, look, and I'm not a, <laughs> and this is the only time I digress, you know me, I like to get right into it. My episodes don't last no longer than, than 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes at the maximum. I do want to get to a point where I start having like hour long shows. I remember there was times I did when I had co-hosts on, you you really had that, but it really is refreshing to see like an interview that's not that long. Like we're talking about a bunch of fluff right now. Like we need to get to the meat and potatoes. So I come in Spring Hill Maverick. That was an interesting uh, interview, but basically um, he got really candid on the state of hip hop. I'm talking about Tyler, the creator. He said, in quotes, I don't want to seem like a hater. Sometimes I have hater energy because I just think that I'm good. He consisted. I love this art form so much, bro. And there's so many N words out right now that aren't musicians that are getting treated like musicians because they make meme records. He's basically saying here that it's become like this meme of, oh, I'm going to put on this cosplay or I'm going to act like this. I'm going to come out and basically have my same persona as like an artist that was before me that I've admired and I really don't care about music I'm just you know this is the way to this is the way to really get popular in this game so I'm just I'm gonna just ride the wave and basically get the money and attention and whatever comes after that with it I'm mean, not really caring about the art form or really trying to you know make something new or shift culture in any way and I think that's what the conversation was but in this interview however he goes on to talk about this specific white rapper okay that he says in quotes mocks the likeness of a future or Gucci man okay so here is the initial clip from the interview it's white kid regular like Caucasian man and he's like mocking future and Gucci Mane rap music. And people are like, this shit hard. It's not even satire. It's I'm just joking. I'm just mocking it. But I'm like, no, you can't do And I hold rap music so close too. to my heart because this shit changed my life and everyone's life around me. And I'm a nerd about this shit. This is weird. And I'm, why, I'm looking at it and something about it don't even sit well with me in comparison to someone like a Mac Miller or Eminem, who it didn't seem like they was mocking it. They had a genuine love for it, and they were still just being. For sure. So here, so that's what he said. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> it was rumored that he was talking about this rapper named Ian. Now, basically, what he was trying to say here is that these rappers that are coming into the game, and this person who happens to be a white rapper, uh, a lot of them, because because I do feel like I know he was bringing up the fact that he was like a white artist or whatever, a white rapper coming into this. But I think that also it could be the same thing could be said about a lot of these black artists. I, I th I'm not saying that black artists cosplay other black artists, but definitely they ride the wave of what is in at that time. Just as much. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the white ones probably do a little bit worse. Sir. But in this moment, he was basically saying that there's just no authenticity. And that people, and we can say artists, but we can also blame the labels as well because they enable this. They've signed these people. They are throwing whatever they can throw to the wall, seeing what sticks, seeing what goes viral on TikTok. And now notice how in the interview he explains like there has been white artists in the past that they came into the game with their own like persona and own 
way of really shifting the culture when we're talking when he brought up Eminem and, and Mac Miller. Yes, they had their own wave. I don't know any other rapper that's like an Eminem or like a Mac Miller. I can tell you some newer rappers after them that probably copy them or whatever and let that sink in because after that interview he got a lot of heat for it like <laughs> he was getting called the old head and, and you bitter and then this that and the third let's discuss i listen to the ends music okay i listened to some of the rap songs okay every bit of five seconds that i had to turn it off because i'm sorry i was like i will wear that hat i'm old i don't look i don't get into a lot of these new artists there's some that i really get into there's some that really does their thing it definitely i can see i can hear future and gucci man infused and it, and it does he was not really rapping on beat the audio quality was trash i don't know who bounced that i don't know who like really edit that like, like it, it definitely gave that you, <laughs> you made that song off of audacity and no shade to the people that make their music off of audacity and logic and all that other stuff child girl the mastering just was not good it, he was off beat it just was not it, it was not a good quality i, I should say and it, and it definitely does give that this is a front for him and the, it, this is he is acting this is not his true authentic self and I think that's what Tyler was saying. It was just like, you're not really being yourself and you sound like these other artists and, and whatever you did to get where you are, you've used that to your advantage and you really aren't really trying to shift culture. It's one thing if you are coming into this game with your own situation and we get it, you know, there's been so many artists out so long. It's, it's hard to be original. It's hard to not have like people that you, okay, this is an inspiration for me and I want to use this into my own work. It's hard to really pay homage to that without looking like it's your own, but also not taking too much from the artist that you're trying to capture here. I will say this might have the tables have turned because if we remember, people said the same thing about Tyler, the creator, when he first came out. I don't think that people were saying that he was copying nobody. There was nobody. There was no other artist that has ever came into the game like a Tyler, the creator, like the way he did. It, it was just very different. He just did things that you just never heard of. And it was good. It was it was like something. It was something about him. And I can also remember people like DJ Khaled questioning him, getting the Grammy over him, basically discrediting his music, trying to say that it's not real music and that. I think with Tyler, the creators, the crux of his, like, people were trying to say that he was not a serious artist. Like, he was a like, he was a meme artist. In so many words, like he said in the interview, like, it, it was almost like the T-Pain situation where T-Pain talked about how Usher kind of reprimanded him for saying that you ruined music because you did auto-tune and you made music that wasn't like, and, it's, and it comes to a point of, okay, so who are you to say what is and what is not music? With artists like Ian and others coming up, it's not just him. And when we're talking artists, I'm saying white, black, orange, red, blue, purple, whatever. It's just an inauthentic, okay? Rap was at its best when everybody did their own thing. There was a part in that interview also with Tyler, the creator, where he talked about how, you know, there were, like, he was layering different artists from, like, the early 2000s, saying that Pharrell wasn't like this artist and this artist wasn't like that artist. Like, each artist that came out after the next came in with their own image. They came in with their own authentic flows and, 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 and um, cadences when it comes to rapping and stuff like that. They did their own thing. Music videos weren't the same. I think what we're now seeing is just copy and paste. Like the industry has become copy and paste. It's really happening in the rap community, in the rap genre. It's it's starting to really happen in all genres. If you really think about it, like when we're talking about like pop music and stuff like that, I'm going to be honest. The Sabrina Carpenter song, which is like one of the popular songs of the year. It sounds like a song that Doja was saying. Like people have said that no hate to Sabrina Carpenter. But I'm just seeing, I'm seeing the copy and paste over and over again. I think what we're seeing now is companies planting and platforming any and everybody. Okay, just because they went viral on TikTok for a couple of videos, trying to force feed us, the public, garbage. And with the hopes of getting viral on TikTok to get some type of a profit off of songs and, and to get them into tours and all this other stuff. And really... When these people drop their projects, it don't deliver because it's just, we just got, okay, this song was hot. It was cute for a little moment. It was on a video. That's all I hear when I'm on TikTok and I hear it on the radio a little bit. But I'm not going back to see your album. I'm not going back to, I'm not like, and, and, pe and a lot of people are not doing it unless it's like somebody that's already been in the game for a little bit. I feel like this industry, they're not in the business 
of breaking out talented artists. They're whitewashing the market if you really want to get into it. Look, I ain't got nothing against no non-black artist that wants to get into the genre, but it, it does seem like there is a bit of an agenda here to kind of push out a certain demographic in the genre that was created by them to these other artists that they're not really doing, they're not really putting in the work, they're not really doing much to it, they're not shifting the culture, and they're getting praises. And here's the thing. I feel like I, I find it so, I, I'm not that flabbergasted that Tyler is getting some backlash from this because I feel like the people that are really coming for Tyler is, you know, is very akin to, to Ian. If you know what I mean, child, I'm touching my the white part of my skin, okay? For the audio listeners. Like, you know, it, that was most of Tyler's fans. Like, most of Tyler's fans are non-black. Let's be very clear on that. So I think for him to say that and then use that verbiage, oh, well, this white artist, da 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 I think people just got offended because they just saw the, the white part and it was like, mm, actually, no, you an old head. It's that and third. You ain't going to come for Ian. Because, girl, y'all was not caring about Ian before he made that comment. It's, I have to go back on your ass, Tyler, because you were the ones that encouraged your fans. We didn't forget that you encouraged your white fans to say the N-word. You opened the space for that environment. But then also you got mad because now they want to be you. And some of them are getting successful at it. I don't know. It just pisses me off. And it pisses me off because I'm bored. Like nothing that has come out in the past like month. Think about it. And look, if that make me an old head, I'm proud. But we have four months, four more months into this year. Can anybody say there was a rap song of the year? I don't care what was awarded because they got to give it to somebody. But can you say there was a rap song of the year? Hell, can you say, was there a song of the year? Was there a record of the year? Was there? And I'm talking about the old heads too. The old heads ain't pushing their way. The old heads is using AI. We'll get into that a little bit later to put, to push whatever narrative that they're trying to push in music. And the music industry has gone lackluster. And I think that a lot of people have a lot of companies, a lot of music companies and all that. They, they've gone lazy. And I think, and it's not even about them being lazy. It's the simple fact that it's it's a popularity contest. Oh, I got this many followers on so and so. I got this on TikTok. I got that on. This. I'm gonna give them a record deal, and, and they'll those people will miraculously come from TikTok and whatever app that they're viral off of, and, and and it'll translate into unit soul, which it never really works. And everybody's the same. Everybody does the same thing. Everybody has the same imagery. It's weird. Music was never like this. Like. When I got in, let me tell you something, when I got into popular music, I'm not just talking about pop music, I'm talking about all types, like when it was, I remember back in the 2010s era, and fine, I don't care, like I said, y'all call me an old head if y'all want to, 2010s era, that was the era that I really paid attention to music and pop culture and stuff like that, and I felt like that was the best for, that was the best music, okay, when everybody was doing the EDMs, when rap was in and R&B had a different sound, like each artist had a different sound, we had a lot of really prominent R male R&B artists. Now I can't really I can't really name two right now that's really out there still doing the thing, let alone rap. Everybody and, and, and I'm not just saying this just to the white artists. I'm saying it to the black ones too. Everybody sound like Lil Baby. Everybody sound like Lil Baby. Everybody got that techno sound, got the with the top with the, what Travis Scott did with the auto-tune rap thing. Everybody is doing that. And it's lackluster. And like I said, it's starting with rap, but it's infiltrating in other genres. A lot of these new pop girlies, like they're coming out, they're they're doing their runs, they're doing their songs or whatever. It's it's become normalized to have ten songs on an album and like three, two to three minute like songs. It's just I don't I hate how and I think they're moving at the they're moving to the beat of like social media and how internet is progressing and stuff like that as far as TikTok and stuff. And it's it's making the music bad. Everybody and everybody's dropping music. That's another thing. Everybody's dropping music. I'm hearing now that we heard that uh, Brianna's supposed to be dropping something in 2025. 
everybody's dropping music. And I think that when it's too much of anything is bad for you, like I said in the last episode, too much of anything is bad for you. I don't know what, what's to come, but I, I will say this. The only people that's really carrying a little bit, just a little bit, and a little bit because they're still flopping too, the women in hip-hop, the female rappers, I mean, they have been dropping consistent stuff. They have been trying to do and, and, and appear different and try have their own lane with certain things. It's not working for a lot of them, but I will say that there is some type of an effort. There's just no effort in the male rap spaces. Like, what the hell are y'all doing? It's really silent. The fact that you can look at the double XL and not know a single person on there. And I'm not just talking about the old heads because I, I look, I'm still young. So, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But I'm telling you right now, if you look at that, if this year's double XL, you're not going to know a single artist on there. That is, that never was a thing. You would knew at least five people on that magazine. I don't care. I don't care how old you were. Maybe, okay, maybe if you like in the 50s or whatever, okay, probably 50, like 40s or whatever, you, you still into the, the 90s rap and all that bull crap. But you knew like mid 2010s, every time they came out with a double XL, you knew exactly who they were. The fact that you do not know a single person on that magazine that says a lot. That says a lot. Everybody's copy and paste and everybody just look. They look a little different, but they sound the same. Real common. Okay. So I understand what Tyler, the creator, was trying to say here. If that makes him old head, then okay. <laughs> that is quite all right. But I will move on. Because I don't want to sound like I'm writing a little bit too much on this. Y'all will tell me what y'all think about that in the comments. Okay. Now, another discussion that I wanted to get into, child, that happened this week, honey. Now, why y'all was coming for Michael Ruby, honey? Girl. Okay. So, I'm going to read this little excerpt. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. Now, in a recent interview, Michael Rubin says that he does not like the, the black hate on hate while referring to rumors regarding Meek Mill. If you recall, these rumors started after people speculated that Meek Mill was an unnamed person mentioned in the ex-trafficking lawsuit with Diddy. Now, Ruben follows his comments by saying that he only wants to uplift his friends and wish others would do the same. Um, And then most recent news, he followed up with a statement, basically apologizing to the black community for stepping out of terms and Basically, this is what he said. I got a phone call from one of the people I have most respect for in the world. They told me, while they appreciate my intention, it's not my place to speak on black culture. And I get it and really appreciate the input. My intention was to say how important it is that, that we need to uplift each other, stop hate on each other and push each other to win. And always root for each other's success. My bad. Much love and appreciate the feedback. Okay. Now, this is what he said, though. When I see the narrative of a really good friend of mine like Meek, and people are trying to, you know, again, if he was gay, which there's not one gay bone in his body, who cares, number one? Let's say, if people mm -hmm. want to be gay, it is 2024. Who the cares? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, there's not a gay bone in his body. So, like, why do people want to lie about that? Why do people want to change the narrative of a bet he made with me mm -hmm. to try to hurt him? That is the one thing I've learned about, look, I'm just being blunt because it's me. So one thing I've learned about black culture that I don't like is that black hate on hate. Speak uh, on that more. I heard you say that earlier and I wanted you to expound on that. You said yeah, you don't yeah. like to see black people tearing down other black people. Yeah, it's horrible. Like, it's horrible. Like, I want to support every, look, you got two of you guys know me pretty well. Mm -hmm. Anything I can ever help with, I'm always there. Mm -hmm. I always want to be helpful. I feel lucky and fortunate to do what I do every day, to be as, you know, whatever success I've had, I feel blessed to do that. And I want to give back in every way I can, you know, in business and in charitable things, I'm always trying to be helpful. Like, why does someone want to bring somebody else down? Let's try to build everybody up. They okay, so yeah, that's what he said. Here's the thing, right? A lot of you ninjas are hypocritical as hell. Let's be very honest. Y'all are, y'all are hypocrites, okay? When people outside of our race talks about things that we agree with, that is facts, the truth, you know, or even like mimics us or in certain ways, it's like, oh, you're immediately invited to the cookout. It's the moment that somebody says something that the black community does not like, does not agree with, does not go by, then that's when it becomes, oh, at the end of the day, you, you need to stay in a white person's place. I just find that so hilarious how selective we are in our outrage because, girl, now here's the thing, though. Did this man overstep his boundaries? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. 
it was not his place. Him saying the whole black on black, that that is a ne- I don't think he understood that the whole black on black, because that's what a lot of people like to throw in our faces when we're talking about police brutality is like the whole, oh, black on black crime and this, that, and the third. He shouldn't have said black on black. Let's be very clear, because that, that, that kind of re- reminds us of that. And that's what it gave. And I think that's what people were just like, I think people just saw that part and was like, yeah, no, you shouldn't have said that you a white man. Da, 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 da. And especially in this climate, too. Like, we just had the situation with Sonya Massey and people are like still, we are still upset about that. Was not his place at all. But also, did he lie? Did he lie? No, he did not lie. Hell no, he did not lie. This is a case of the right message, wrong messenger. Okay. And we do tend to do that. Do we know that Meek Mill is tethered to this whole situation with, with, with Diddy? We know that his the person that worked with him that's now suing him and all that stuff, like he he named Meek Mill in the lawsuit, but it's it's not his his story is not verifiable. And I think that yeah, there is like a layer of yes, yeah, we can get real slanderous with each other when it comes to sexual preference. And they look at Meek Mill does a lot of weird things, like the whole thing where he was at that at the little wrestling match, and he said, "Get up!" And then y'all was like making fun of him, making fun of his sexuality with that too. I think what Michael Rubin was saying was the truth. That is what we do. That is, it's not what I do, child. It's what a lot of people in the black community does. So I think that when you got called out, when y'all got called out by it and y'all wanted to drag him for it, yes, it was not his place. I find it funny too that also had Michael Rubin played on to the narrative that Meek Mill was is, is somehow gay or something like that, y'all would have been laughing at it. Y'all would have been like, oh yeah, he's spitting facts, he's spitting facts, this, that, and the third. Like y'all, and, and, and we know where that comes from. I'm not going to reveal, I'm not going to open up that can of worms or why that is the case. But yeah, like y'all, it's real hypocritical over there, child. That's just what I, what I wanted to say about that situation, child. <laughs> very hypocritical. I thought that was very funny. That topic was a very funny topic this week. Okay. Then let's move on, Jam. I did want to talk about Nicki Minaj. Shout out to the queen because she is actually, I'm going to start off with, with, with some positive. I think both news is positive, right? So basically, she announces the Pink Friday 2 tour. Okay, so she's spinning the block again in America. Okay. And she's going to have names like Tyga, Bia, Skill Being. Um, they're going to be on the show, whatever. I looked at the dates, too. Let me see if the dates is here, too. Yeah, the dates is here. She's not coming to Newark again, girl. I would have definitely showed up again if she would be coming to Newark, honey, because I, I can't do New York or Philly, honestly. I cannot, child. Mm-mm, mm-mm, child. You be starting mad late. It be like 12 o'clock, and I got to get an Uber all the way from Philly to turn. Girl, no, I ain't doing that. But I had a good time. So a lot of people were like, I will say this, though. There were a lot of people that were coming for her because of, like, I guess the promotion of this tour, like the picture that she used is AI generated. Like I said, I don't think it was any of her fans that were saying it. I think it was a lot of people that was dragging her and, and basically saying that, oh, my goodness, like, she's cheap as hell for doing that. And she should have definitely got a photo, like a real photo shoot. She while She's utilizing AI to promote yada, yada, yada. It really didn't dawn on me. So I saw this one tweet and I just can't remember where I found it at, but I can paraphrase it. Basically, they were saying, y'all literally, because half of the people that's on these little stand accounts, one of the girls, and also one of the girls that said Charlie XCX ate down with the little brat cover art where she just said brat. And it was just like, it was like a freaking, y'all know Charlie XCX new album, brat, with the little green, with the black wording. Very basic, very simple. I could have made it on Canva. Nobody bats an eye about that. Um, but Nikki has to get on a photo shoot and do all this extra stuff to promote a tour concert. I think that I would be more like upset if she did all that and then gave us a lackluster concert. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think that the attention is the concert. Like, it's the tour. It's the it's Pink Friday World Tour. That's where you give all your energy and all the production and all that other stuff, too. I'm promoting this bitch. And if I want to use AI, I could use AI. There's a lot of companies that are using AI, and it's getting to the point where you really can't tell if it's AI or not. It's really getting to that point. 
there's going to be a lot of other artists that's going to utilize this as well for their projects and stuff. I don't like... I get if you're like doing like a whole album cover using AI like that's She got listens to a little bit of allegations that Pink Friday 2 was AI type. Shoot, I don't think so. I don't think she used AI. Like, let's be very clear. But if she's going to do this for a promotion of a tour, so what? And I don't know. I just feel like people complain about like things that just are not that deep. She had a good show <laughs> and I've been there twice. Okay, she definitely kept me out the seat. Okay, I just care about the show. Are you giving me a good show? So, yeah, shout out to Nikki. And let me know if y'all going to the concert. Tell me how it goes, child. I'll, I'll just be, I'll be supporting on the sidelines like Lotto. <laughs> anyway, in other news with Nikki, Chow, it looks like she settled with the YouTuber... Nosy hell, child. Now, I'm going to read this little excerpt and I'll give you guys my thoughts, okay? Now, Nicki Minaj has settled her 2022 lawsuit with social media personality who made accusations against her that she used drugs. Now, according to TMZ, the settlement calls for Marley Green, a.k.a. Nosy hell. Now, she got my last name, to apologize for her false statements about Nicki. Now, if you recall... Nosy Ho posted a video claiming that Nikki was shoving all the narcotics up her nose. Reports state that Nosy Ho acknowledged the comments uh, she said about Nikki using the narcotics were false, and she never had any evidence of Nikki using those drugs. Okay. Now, Nikki also claimed that in her lawsuit, Nosy Ho said some vile comments about her son. Per the settlement, Nosy Ho agreed to never mention Nikki's child or say anything more about Nikki and the narcotics. <laughs> In addition, she cannot retweet anything, cannot like any comment, or yeah, can't retweet because you can't see people's likes anymore about Nikki doing any illegal or anything unethical, right? Now, if Nosy Ho is to breach the agreement, she will have to pay Nikki $50,000 dollars for each offense so if you caught retweeting negative things about nikki and you talked about her son and you didn't oh fifty thousand plus fifty thousand plus fifty thousand plus fifty thousand okay each offense <laughs> girl nosy nosy girl how you get girl and this is where i say this is what happens when you hoes do not use the word allegedly, it may seem, <clears throat> sources say, you cannot just say things to be true and expect nothing to happen to you, especially when you got a big platform like you do. A lot of these, a lot of these tea pages, a lot of these shit talkers and celebrity gossipers, child, y'all are not keeping it cutesy. Y'all not keeping it very demure because a lot of y'all asses is getting sued out here. Y'all getting sued, child. <laughs> Could never be me. Let me just knock on wood, child, because I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, child. <laughs> Let me stop. But yeah, you have to utilize that. I, I think that, and then also you coming for the girl's son, and that's bullying. That's beyond you just giving the news. Like, you, okay, you don't like this person. There's a lot of artists. There's a lot of celebrities that I don't like that I do talk about, and I try to give them as much grace as I can, but if they are wrong on something, I, you already know I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get in the head. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have some type of decorum. Some type of decorum when it comes to giving out the news and stuff like that. These are people's lives. And we do, and look, that's what I do. I talk about the rich and famous and stuff like that, but it's never in a way, and if it is, y'all can check me in the comments, but it's never in a way of badgering or, like I said, with the cyberbullying. Like, that was you literally, the stuff that you were saying about her son, I will not repeat because that was just god awful vile that's just some stuff that you don't say child that's some stuff that you get some karma for i'm just saying like i said you got to you got you girls got to keep it cutesy very demure you uh, it, it, it's not giving <laughs> but anyway shout out to nikki for that she got her little get back there and y'all got to watch what y'all have to say y'all really do anyway i guess my last topic i want to get into before i get up out of here child i guess we can get a little political mm Girl, Stephen A. Smith, child, he really calls himself calling out Kamala Harris, child. I'm so sick of it. I'm sick of it because it's like, bruh, like, what, what? Anyway, 
On a recent episode of his podcast, the longtime sports analyst claimed that the presidential hopeful isn't as visible as she should be uh, when it comes to doing interviews and answering tough questions as she campaigns for the highest office in the U.S. He pointed out that President Joe exited the race for president on July 21st, the day he endorsed Kamala and her official campaign for the head, for the head state began. Now, here is what he said, child. Here's a little clip of what he said. Step down. Step aside. As the presumptive Democratic nominee on July 21st. Okay? Now, I'm going to look at this right now. I'm looking at my calendar because I just want to make sure. July 21st was a Sunday. We've had one week, two weeks, three weeks, and one day. Since Joe Biden stepped aside. The only damn place we've seen Kamala Harris is at, is at pep rallies. What's up? Somebody got to say something. And it can't just be the conservatives. It's right. I'm talking to my sister here. Come on now. You running for the presidency of the United States of America. You got my vote. You running for the presidency of the United States of America. What you hiding for? And hiding in plain sight. Somebody got to say it. And, and, and this is the part that kind of perplexes me. I'm going to stop right here because I don't want to hear nothing else that he has to say. This is what perplexes me because when he, the part where he said, oh, you got my vote, but we need to have these conversations, which is true. Let's be clear. I think that if you are going to go for office, that's, well, I'm, I'll say the same thing to Kamala. Like I said, like I'll say to Trump, like I'll say to anybody else that wants to run for president. Yeah, you're going to have to ask some tough questions. And you should be put in spots that put you in that really pushes the envelope in that way. I thought it was very interesting. I don't mess. With, I do not mess with Trump. Let's be very clear. I thought it was very interesting that he had those interviews with those black reporters, and they was giving him the business that, that a couple weeks ago. I thought that was very interesting. He would never do that. That's wow. Even though he blew it <laughs> and really wasn't really answering any of the questions, I got smart with one of the girls that was grilling him. Still. The effort of doing that, I'm like, okay, oh, oh all right. So you want to get into the lion's den and, and, and plead your case. I would love to see Kamala do that. But at the end of the day, too, like, girl, check your narcissism at the door. She don't got to speak to you, Otis. She ain't got to see you, Otis. Like, you're not even, you're a sports analyst, okay? Just like me, girl, I'm a celebrity gossiper, honey. I, I know about the celebrity gossip, child. I'm not going to sit there and, and, and complain that, Nobody wants to, to to have know my political take on things or to want to sit down or whatever this, that, and the third. Like, you're not, like, she's not even in your range. What would you ask her? I'm pretty sure he got questions. He got his questions, child. But also, Kamala doesn't owe you a sit down. That's not your, that's not her job. It's the media reaches out to the public figure to have a sit down conversation. Unless the, the person wants some type of attention on themselves. They want to be in the limelight, this, that, and the third. But Kamala doesn't need that. It's the media's job. It's the publication's job to reach out to that person's team or to that person in particular to get them on the show. Why weren't you doing that behind closed doors? And then you're also saying that, oh, you got my vote. But I, I, I'm so sick of people, especially in this dang black community, child, when they get into these conversations talking about Kamala, it's like, I support you, but I feel X, Y, and Z. Or, yeah, but you put away these, like, we can't be having these conversations. We need to be in unison right now, okay? Because it's, it's going to be uh, it's either her or the orange man. Now, do y'all want the orange man or y'all not? <laughs> That's just what I'm saying. So, and it just reminds me of that movie that Regina King was in, like the Shirley Chisholm, that that biopic of her life when she, Shirley Chisholm was this politician that, that actually was the first black woman to run for president. And I can remember watching the movie and seeing a lot of people that were in her community Okay, touching the black part of my skin now, that would shoot her down and would and would not support her just because I guess I, I'm guessing it's either anti blackness, misogyny, or both. And I'm seeing like a, a resurgence of that. Like I, I've heard with Dr. Omar was talking and he was saying that oh, well they offered me ten thousand dollars to speak with Kamala. I'm gonna say I'm not doing that for no ten thousand dollars, but I will have a conversation. Like it's y'all are coming for her so bad, and it's like. It's hard to watch. Like, I can expect it from conservatives and other people, you know what I'm saying, that don't really care about Kamala and her well-being or her plight with a lot of things. But it is it is hurtful when it's your own people that's, like, shooting her down. 
And then it's, it's I don't know, and it's almost I don't know where you stand because now you're saying, oh, you got my vote, but it shouldn't be up. But anyway, that's just, that's just all I got to say about that, I guess, honey. I mean, look, y'all will tell me what y'all think about that in the comments. We can get up out of here, child. We like 51 minutes in here. I already know it's probably going to be cut down to like 30, child. Cause <laughs> Girl, it was a lot of things that I had to like that we got to edit out. <laughs> so goodbye to my Sunday. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed the show. I will try to be back on Thursday. I will try. Okay. Tentative, <laughs> like I said earlier. So thank you so much for listening and be sure to like the video and comment and all that other stuff. If you listen to the podcast, hey, how y'all doing? Be sure to leave that review and all that. And to the We Are You Radio listeners, I hope your Mondays got a little bit better with the show. <laughs> I will see you guys next Monday, okay?